ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜಾದಿ ಹಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜಾದಿ ಹಿ ಜಯ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ಬಾಲಿವಾರಧಾರಿ ಜಯ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ಬಾಲಿವಾರಧಾರಿ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ವ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ವ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಜಮುನ ಚೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಜಮುನ ಚೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪರಪರಮಹಂಸ ಪ್ರಿವರಾಜಿಕ ಚಾಯ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಸ್ತಾತ ಶಿಷ್ಯಮಾತ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿಧಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ರಪಾರ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪರಪರಮಹಂಸ ಪ್ರಿವರಾಜಿಕ ಚಾಯ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಸ್ತಾತ ಶಿಷ್ಯಮಾತ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ಸರಸ್ವಾತಿಗ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾರ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಅನಂತ ಕೋರಿ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ಅವರಿಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ನಮ್ಮ ಚಾರ್ಯ ಶುಲ ಹರಿ ದಾಸ್ ಠಾಕೂರ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಕಹೋ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗಾಧರ ಶಿವಾಸರಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೋಪ ಗೋಪಿನಾಥ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಅಮ ಕುಂದ ರಾಧ ಕುಂದ ಕಿರ್ ಗೋವರ್ಧನ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಬೃಂದಾವನ ಧಾಮ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಮಥುರಾ ಧಾಮ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ನವದ್ವೀಪ್ ನವದೀಪ್ ಮಾಯಪುರ ಧಾಮ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ್ ಪುರಿ ಧಾಮ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಗಂಗಮಾಯ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಯಮುನ ಮಾಯ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ತುಸಿ ದೇವಿ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ದೇವಿ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಸಮೇತ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಗೋ ಪ್ರೇಮನಂದ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ದಿ ಅಸೆಂಬೋ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ದಿ ಅಸೆಂಬೋ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ದಿ ಅಸೆಂಬೋ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ದಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಎನ್ ಗೋರಂಗ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ 
ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ So today we're reading chapter number one, Bhagavad Gita. It's entitled Observing the Armies on the Battle for the Kurukshetra. Text number 31. So we'll recite Sanskrit. Nacha Shriyo Nupashyami Hatva Swajanam Ahave Nakankshe Vijayam Krishna Nacharajam Shukhani Cha Translation by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada So we see, okay uh, Shri Prabhupada's uh, translation I do not see how any good can come from killing my own kinsman in this battle Nor can I, my dear Krishna, desire any subsequent victory, kingdom or happiness And the purport, without knowing that one's self-interest is, is in Vishnu or Krishna, conditioned souls are attracted by bodily relationships, hoping to be happy in such situations. In such a blind conception of life, they forget even the cause of material happiness. Arjuna appears to have even forgotten the moral codes of Akshatriya. It is said that two kinds of men, namely the Akshatriya who dies directly in front of the battlefield under Krishna's personal orders, and the person in the renounced order of life who is absolutely devoted to spiritual culture are eligible to enter into the sun globe, which is so powerful and dazzling. Arjuna is reluctant even to kill his enemies, let alone his relative. He thinks that by killing his kinsmen there would be no happiness in his life, and therefore is not willing to fight. Just as a person who does not feel hunger is not inclined to cook. He has now decided to go into the forest and live a, in, live a secluded life in frustration. But Akshatriya, he requires a kingdom for subsistence, because the Akshatriyas cannot engage themselves in any other occupation. But Arjuna has no kingdom. Arjuna's sole opportunity for getting a kingdom lies in fighting with his cousins and brothers and reclaiming this kingdom inherited from his father, which he does not like to do. Therefore, he considers himself fit to go to the forest to live a secluded life of frustration. Om Magyana Tsimarandasya, Gyanan Jana Shalakya, Chakshurun Milita Minat Sasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam, Shnapitam Yana Bhutale, Svayam Rupa Gadam Vyam, Dadoti Svapadantikam, Vanja Kopatri Vishya, Kripa Hasindu Bhivacha, Pajitanam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnavi Bhya Namo Namaha, ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗಾಧರ ಶಿವ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಸೊ ಅಗೇನ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಫಾರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ನೈಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ My goal today is to explain a little bit of a, like a summary of this chapter, the mood of Krishna and Arjuna, and why the battlefield took place. And of course, we are kind of a little short on time, so it would be um, a little difficult to mention all the details, but I'll try to say something. So Bhagavad Gita, it's a very famous discourse. It's uh, one of the greatest philosophical and religious dialogues known to men. It's called Atma Vidya, knowledge of the self and knowledge of Krishna. And it took place just before the onset of the war of Kurukshetra. Kurukshetra means uh, land of Kuru. It's also known as Dharmakshetra, the um, um, holy land. And it's, uh, it describes this great conflict between the uh, sons of Dhritarashtra, hundred sons of Dhritarashtra, and um, the Pandavas. or the sons of Pandu. And Dhritarashtra, King Dhritarashtra was blind from birth, and he was blind physically, and also um, he was bereft of spiritual vision as well. <laughs> But it's a very interesting story about how he, um, with his wife uh, Gandhari, how they beget a hundred children. Because Uh, Gandhari, she was actually uh, a very chaste lady, is a very um, amazing example in the history of the world. 
and she when she came to know that her husband is blind she decided to become also voluntarily blind all her life she was um, following like this her husband also wrapped up her eyes with uh, some silk and she was worshiping Lord Shiva and uh, despite all her good qualities she had um, the natural fertility of a woman and she was very envious of Mother Kunti because she actually had a first child and uh, she became angry and uh, they were both pregnant at the same time and what she did she actually gave a plow on her abdomen and uh, as a result she gave birth to a lump of flesh instead of a child but because um, she was a devotee of um, Vyasadeva she took instructions of Vyasadeva and actually that lamb was divided into a hundred pieces and gradually developed become uh, each of this piece became a male child and like this um, she begat a hundred children and actually her mood was not, she was not fa in favor of fighting with the Pandavas. She did not want to fight with the Pandavas. She desired that she would be, um, that the kingdom would be divided equally between two families. And uh, this war lasted about 18 days in total. <laughs> and many, many people um, where many people died. It's described that 440 million people died in, a, in, this, in this battlefield, but some of the people even from the f side of the Akuras survived. For instance, Ashwatthama and Kripa and Kritavarma, they survived. And this war took place um, somewhere in the, um, somewhere far away, like these, this uh, Kurukshetra, this is not close to um, population where people live. So it, did, it wouldn't cause much of the disturbance to um, just peaceful, normal, ordinary people. And also it is described that all the, all the fighters, all the warriors who saw Krishna at the battlefield, they were able to achieve liberation and re they, they um, regain a spiritual form because of the causes mercy of the Lord. And like this, we can see that Krishna was um, very merciful, not only to the Pandavas, but to everybody else. And just to give a little bit of a, um, you can say, to set up the scene with the uh, two families, Dhritarashtra and Pandu, they were brothers in the beginning. They were born from the same um, Kuru dynasty, descending from King Bharat. And he, uh, he used to rule the, the whole uh, planet, the whole earth. And because uh, Dhritarashtri was elder brother, he was blind from, um, from birth. He couldn't um, come and become um, a king. So Pandu, he was a king in the beginning. He um, took the throne, but he died at an early age. And he had five children, Yudhishthir, Bhima, Arjuna, Nakula, and Sahadev. So, um, when he died, Dhritarashtra took over the throne and all these all these children, they were um, growing up in the same uh, household with um, their cousins, the sons of Dhritarashtra. And they were trained in the military arts by um, uh, Dronacharya and Bish Bishmadev. Dronacharya and Bishmadev, they actually um, uh, Maharatis, the great commanders. And we, um, all of us probably know that uh, Bhishma is, is one of the 12 Mahajans, um, 12 authorities. And he, um, when he was living the body, it's, it's a very glorious way um, that is described in the Bhagavatam. He was actually, um, he left a lot of uh, very nice instructions about religions, um, politics, and um, he was speaking about chastity of women, and yeah, he left a lot of nice instructions. And Bhishma Dev, um, so he was, um, 
when he when when the battlefield was taking place, he was actually affectionate to the Pandavas. But because he was maintained by Dhritarashtra economically, um, he had to accept and fight on his uh, on his side. Yes, and we can see that the um, the eldest uh, el eldest son, the eldest son of, of the terrestrial, his name is Duryodhana. He was very envious and hateful of the Pandavas, and he was always um, he wanted to inherit the kingdom, so he was always committing um, s s certain things that would uh, cause you know suffering. He wanted to. Killed, uh, kill uh, the Pandavas. And one time he ordered uh, one of his servants, uh, Prochana, to build a house in Varanavata. And when he built the house, uh, Dhritarashtra, he desired to. Actually, I'm sorry. Th this was uh, this was actually uh, Dhritarashtra's idea to to build that house, because Duryodhana he didn't have any. You can say didn't didn't have any. Uh, boundaries. He just wanted to simply kill Pandavas. But Dhritarashtra, he was a little bit more um, peaceful in an annihilation of his nephews. He didn't want to just kill them. He was he, he wanted to be a little more peaceful with that. And so they built this house and invited the Pandavas to live there. And the house was entirely made of different uh, flammable material. So later, when the Pandavas were settled down in in that house, the the housekeeper. He wanted to burn that house, but it actually didn't happen because the Pandavas were saved by Vidura, who built um, a tunnel underneath the earth. And uh, the, the the after setting the fire, the Kauravas were actually um, they they knew that, that the Pandavas died, and Dhritarashtra performed the, the the rites of death for them. It was they were feeling very cheerful, but in actuality, Pandavas did not die; they were saved. And so, the last um, one of the calamities that took place that really um, began the war it was a gambling match with uh, when Duryodhana challenged the Pandavas. It happened uh, before the exile. There was a tournament in which uh, Dushasana he uh, grabbed uh, Draupadi, the chaste uh, w wife of the Pandavas, and he s insulted her in front of everybody because he was he, he kept on on her sari and he wanted to strip her naked in front of everybody. But because of the uh, intervention of Krishna, he, uh, she was saved. And um, Pandavas, after this, it was like one of the last shows. They were sent to exile for 13 years, during which they were also attempted to be poisoned and attacked. And uh, they didn't even expect that after returning from exile, they would be able to regain their position. And as Srila Prabhupada explains in the commentaries here in this text, that a duty of a Chatri is to is to fight or to rule, to manage. So it was very important for them to manage. Um, at least they should have a, a little bit of land. And so upon returning from exile, the Pandavas, they rightfully requested their kingdom from Dhritarashtra. But actually, um, Duryodhana, he was arrogantly just, arrogantly just declining. He said that, I would not even give you uh, enough land in which to drive a pin. And they were just asking for at least five villages, so they can maintain their um, their duty. So, the um, the world was divided in two sides, and some were with uh, Dhritarashtra, others were with Pandavas. And actually, Krishna himself took the role of a messenger for um, peace. His pleas were refused, and now the war was certain. So the Pandavas, they were of um, higher moral status, so they recognized Krishna to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whereas the uh, sons of Dhritarashtra, they um, didn't see him as the Supreme Person. And like this, um, they chose 
because Krishna, he, he couldn't be present, he couldn't fight in the war. So he let him decide whether he would give the, the, his, the army, his army, his great army, or he would take the role of a messenger and uh, an advisor, of a helper. And uh, Duryodhana, being a very, uh, um, you can say, um, um, advanced and uh, professional fighter, he chose to stay with the with the with the army, they decided to take the army, and then Krishna himself became an advisor and helper of um, of the Pandus of, of Arjuna in, in the battlefield. Yeah, Duryodhana was a political genius. That's why he he snatched the army, and uh, Krishna went with the side of Arjuna. And then uh, we can see that um, Bhagavad Gita begin begins when the uh, Dhritarashtra was inquiring from his secretary Sanjaya, he's, um, he's seen that all the sites are in the, um, in the Kurukshetra, they, they were to, to fight, but then yet in the Bhagavad Gita he asked this question, what did they do in the first text? He, he's asking, he has, even though it's not an obvious act of what, what's going to happen next. And it seems quite illogical to to ask this question, but actually um, Dhritarashtra himself had doubts about his uh, son's possibility to win um, the victory in this battlefield because of the influence of the holy place that was in favor to Arjuna and, and, and the Pandavas. And so this, actually the discussion um, didn't take place exactly in a the, in the battlefield. It's explained in the Mahabharata that um, it, it was spoken in Hastinapur, which is the place where Dhritarashtra would be staying. And uh, so on the 10th day, Sanjaya returned from the battlefield. He was actually participating in this battlefield. And uh, they, um, yeah, Dhritarashtra, they, he took an opportunity to ask, to inquire from Sanjaya about the details of the war when he returned. And Sanjaya was uh, um, an appropriate person to ask because he 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 actually had a his his guru was Shilav Yasadev, and he gave him to power to see over the over the battlefield what was going on. And so simply we see that the two two armies um, that are present on the battlefield, like on the, on the side of the of the Dhritarashtra, we see Karna and Kripa. Ashwatthama, these great fighters, Vikarna and sons of Samadetta. And on the opposite side, there's Drishti um, Also, there's uh, Virata, Satyaki, Dropada, and uh, the son, sons of the Pandu. And then Arjuna, um, he asked Krishna to bring the chariot between two armies so he can actually see who is present who's present over there. And it's very interesting, um, I was just um, thinking about this, that Krishna, he's called Achyuta, the infallible, because he takes the role of a, um, of, of a charioteer in, in, in the battlefield. And as you can see that somebody who drives the chariot, he's actually commanded to go different places. So it's, it's a very... Um, interesting position. Achyuta means infallible and Krishna he was able to um, he was able to carry the order of his devotee. That's why even though that he has the complete supremacy he was able to carry out the order of, of Arjuna. And literally hundreds and millions of warriors were in, in the Kuru army and Krishna drove the chariot exactly so Arjuna can see Bhishma and Drona. That's the reason for that is because he wanted Arjuna to feel um, um, weakness of heart. That was a plan of Krishna. So, like this, Bhagavad Gita could begin. So Krishna could start speaking Bhagavad Gita, and then we see that. Arjuna lists different reasons of why he doesn't want to fight. He says, first reason um, is that he feels compassion for his relatives. He doesn't want to 
kill them. He says, my whole body is trembling and my hair, my hair is standing on end and my, um, my skin is burning and I can't even hold my bow. The, my bow, the bow is falling out of my hand and I'm unable to stand here any longer. It's very difficult. I'm, Krishna, uh, Arjuna was forgetting himself. His mind was reeling. And he said that I can only see cause of misfortune. And then the, the second reason is that he did not, um, he, was, he didn't see no enjoyment in victory. He says that I do not see how any good can come from killing my kinsmen in this battle, nor can I, my dear Krishna, desire any subsequent victory, kingdom or happiness. He said, O Govinda, what avail to us our kingdom, happiness, or even life itself, when all of those who we may desire to fight for, they um, are raid on this battlefield against us. And the third reason why he did not want to fight is he was fear, fearful of sinful reactions. He was saying that if we kill, um, ag even aggressors, will, sin will overcome us. Therefore, it is not proper for us to kill the sons of Dhritarashtra and our friends. What should we gain? So Krishna, husband of the goddess of fortune, how could we be happy by killing our kinsmen? And then the next reason why Arjuna did not want to fight is um, he was understanding there would be harmful effects of destroying the family. He was given this argument, and it's actually according to um, Shastra also. He was saying, with the destructions of the dynasty, the family tradition becomes vanquished. And uh, in family becomes involved in irreligious activities. And when irreligion becomes prominent, then women, they become polluted. And when there's degradation of womanhood, there's an unwanted pop progeny, unwanted population. And uh, increased unwanted population, it causes hellish life for both the family and for those who destroy the family. And the ancestors of such corrupt families, they fall down because nobody is offering food to them or water. It's entirely stopped. And Srila Prabhupada explains in the, um, in the Bhagavad Gita's in commentaries that sometimes our ancestors, they, they might be um, suffering due to not being able to obtain a uh, a gross form of life. And therefore, if we do not offer um, any of the foodstuff, any of the remnants of prasadam to them, then they, they simply suffer. So, then ancestors of corrupted families fall down because the performance of offering of food is stopped, and then the evil deeds of those who destroy the family tradition and give rise to unwanted children then because of that, the, the different, uh, kind of different com community projects um, also devastated. Community project means that associated with Sanatana Dharma and Varnashnama Dharma. And for instance, the leaders who, um, like in this age, because um, the traditions are put to ruination, there is no actual uh, Varnashrama Dharma, Varnashrama. Var, and we see that the leaders, they are not actually um, following this Varnashrama. And so those who family, whose family traditions are destroyed, then he says, they always they, they dwell in, in hell. And then he says, better for me if the sons of the Tarashtras, uh, they kill me unarmed and unre unresisting on a battlefield. And then he sat down on his uh, chariot and his mind was overwhelmed with grief. And because he was showing symptoms of um, self-hardness and non-violence, he was able to um, receive the knowledge about um, Atma Gyan because he was qualified. He was showing the symptoms of um, um, somebody who is humble, somebody who is ready to, to be instructed in this discipline of um, Atma Gyan. And so, in the in commentaries, Srila Prabhupada 
um, actually it's in a, in the Sanskrit, there's this word called Shreya, means good. And uh, we see that there's Shreya and Preya, and Arjuna is speaking of Shreya, it means uh, ultimate good, but Preya means um, immediate, something palatable, something that um, that is immediately given to you. So everyone should be interested um, for Shreya, <laughs> not for prayer. Just like a child, when he um, likes to play all day and night, he wants something immediate. <laughs> but but we should be interested in in something uh, something that is ultimately good for us. For instance, education. Um, so now Arjuna is, is considering with reference to his future that if I kill my kinsmen, there will be no benefit. He says, I want victory, I want kingdom to become happy, but if my own kinsmen are killed, then what is the value of the victory with whom I shall enjoy? He's thinking like, uh, like that of, of immediate, but... Uh, The problem is what is Shreya, what is ultimate good? Therefore, the, the Bhagavad Gita is required for the ultimate good. His, um, Krishna is, is, is very important, but Arjuna is thinking that his family is very important. Therefore, um, we see here that ultimate good would be to surrender to Krishna and follow in um, his uh, instructions. And of course the future um, chapters of Bhagavad Gita will actually tell us about how these four uh, reasons of why Arjun did not, did not want to fight, they actually, they are not taken um, seriously by Krishna. And therefore Krishna will dispel them, dispel the darkness <laughs> that is coming upon um, Arjuna. And um, yeah, the main um, focus of Bhagavad Gita is that Krishna is the goal and the substance of Bhagavad Gita. And he's the speaker of Bhagavad Gita. And I guess um, this is a little bit of a summary. Um, of the first chapter, and I'll try to also speak about um, the reasons why um, these four arguments were, um, you can say, um, these four arguments of, of um, Arjuna, but feeling compassion and foreseeing no enjoyment and f being fearful and seeing harm harmful effects, how, how they were dispelled by Krishna. But for now, I think this, this is it. This is where we'll stop. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Sorry if it's, this class is a little rushed, but yeah, if you have any questions or comments, if you maybe have any, um, any of the pastimes that you thought of from Mahabharat in regards to this battlefield, it would be, be very nice to hear if, if you'd like to. So he was also sustained by uh, Dhritarashtra. That's that's also one of the reasons. So you wouldn't say that's that's a valid reason. Okay. I agree with uh, I agree with what he's saying because uh, the story that I have read, mm -hmm. he has promised his father that he will be the keeper of the throne. Mm -hmm. Whosoever is going to serve the throne, I will be servant to that person. Yeah, yeah. That's the primary reason he wanted to serve in favor of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, you are right in saying that I'm morally Vishwamuras. Yes, yes. My dharma to keep the throne, to protect the throne. Yes. And I serve who is serving the throne right now, who is the king at the throne. I, I, I guess that's actually exactly what, what, what my point was, because whoever at the throne is, 
maintaining him. So therefore he agreed to fight under his will. Yes, yes. Well, that's, that's a very nice comment. Thank you. Thank you. And let's uh, see what happens in chapter 2 later on. Yes. Next class, huh? oh, yes, yes. Okay, here's the Gita start from the chapter 2. Yes, <laughs> the real instructions, they take place in the second chapter. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Yes. We have last session now. Any quickly, 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 quickly,